Hiya. Hello. Sorry, jumping ahead on slides, but we'll give everyone a few more minutes to come on in. Good morning. How are we doing? Should we uh, get started? Yeah, we've got 30 folks on the line. So um, what I was actually hoping for and was kind of holding around was the uh, um, Zagap delivery folks, because they're always the first ones up. Alphabetical order. <laughs> right? Randomize it. Start uh, from the end or something. When I did, everyone got surprised. Now everyone's still surprised. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, you're right. We can we can go ahead and roll and um, because slides are up there in any way. So, all right. Hello, everyone. I am fresh back from holiday. So remind me what this cloud native thing is again. Excellent. Oh, yeah, <laughs> be fine. Okay. What have we got first up? Is it you've uh, made it to our September meeting? Yeah. Item number one. Um. Item number two that I did not actually put on slides directly, but um, Jeff Brewer has resigned effective this month um, and we will be running an end user election. So more to come on the list for that. And thank you so much, Jeff, for the work that you've done here. So. Hey, hey. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, actually, before, just a sort of point of clarification, does yes. that mean our things like quorum and two thirds is based on a TOC of 10. Correct. Remember. Yes, that is correct. Um, and I have changed the vote tallies over on the other hand. So um, the projects that are needing TOC review are actually all of the votes today. So. Okay. Um, and quorum has been effectively changed for that. Great. All right. So where are we at with projects that need review from the TOC. Three votes currently out. We have Cubage, we have Rook, and we have a Tech Lead nomination for um, Bartolome Baca. So here's the links. Um, those are our currently open votes. Um, there are some other pieces that kind of come up through the SIG updates, and I will let the SIGs do that more directly, but those are the big ones out there. Okay. So moving on. We tried to stall a little bit for app delivery. I will give them a moment to be able to come on in. Should we just come back to them if someone joins? Yep. Happy to, but here we, here we go. They've got, they have sessions and they're working on a landscape. So moving <laughs> on, contributor strategy. And I know Paris is online, so. <laughs> that was the awesomest update, Amy. I want you to give mine too, okay? <laughs> 
Hi, everyone. How are you? Um, we have a short update as well this week since KubeCon was last week and a ton of us were doing maintainer track sessions and whatnot. Um, but I did want to leave a couple of nuggets on the on the slide. Particularly, yes, our survey is ongoing. I've been getting a lot of questions about that. Uh, the survey is really about the discovery and research for the group. It's less about like, like I said, pulse on CNCF kind of stuff. Um, we obviously have had a lot, uh, a lot of governance conversations clearly on the TOC mailing list with the steering committee. Uh, plus, we also have uh, DIMS and a couple other people working on this badging concept. So instead of saying like, hey, you have to have a, a steering committee if you don't meet these requirements, it really would just display what their governance, like the definition of their governance, similar to like, you know, all their security compliance and things like that you see, that you see on readme's so that the end user can make the decision uh, if they want. And uh, good news is that today, uh, I think in a few hours, I'm looking at my calendar, struggling actually. Um, in a few hours, the governance working group is actually meeting. So if these topics are of interest to you and you wanna discuss and you wanna like, and you have a couple ideas, please come, that's what they're there for. It's actually a very healthy size group now. I think it's well over six people that regularly attend that, um, that love governance. So um, we're really trying to get out the uh, the recommendation about the badging as soon as possible. We just need to do some project management there and also um, assign some folks some tasks and things like that. So um, still a good time to come in. Uh, maintainer circle, I have all intentions of uh, attempting to launch at least the first birds of a feather idea. Uh, by the end of this month, the birds of the feather would um, bring in them, <clears throat> excuse me, bring in maintainers and really just talk about what they kind of want to see from this. Uh, I have several ideas, but I would rather mold it with, uh, with other maintainers and what they want to see. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the list of um, proposed topics is in our repo and the contributor strategy repo if you'd like to see kind of like what's on deck. Uh, I'm going to meet with CNCF, Amy, that's our post-it, um, hopefully soon to talk about, uh, to talk about how we're going to deliver that. Um, and the next is our contributor growth group. Uh, we've had a lot of good progress with collaboration on um, template documents there. For, for instance, uh, contributor guide and things like that is about to get PR'd into the project template repo. Oh, we've had a lot of uh, awesome contributors help us out with that. Um, we actually have in, uh, in the PR queue right now, I, I meant to link it on the, on the deck and did not, so I apologize. Uh, we actually do have the project, uh, the project health guidance PR'd in as uh, a first shot from Dawn. Um, and that really is uh, kind of working on the, what does project health mean? Um, because people take y'all really literally. So when you're writing guidance and um, like requirements for graduation, and if it says like, must show positive project health, a lot of people in projects are asking us, what does project health even mean? So, um, so that guidance uh, is under review right now from Dawn uh, and we'll get that going and probably by the next TOC meeting, we'll have something, um, something to give folks. Uh, another cool thing is we actually had a project come to us and ask us for help. So uh, the last uh, contributor strategy meeting we had, we had several maintainers from Container D online. Uh, TLDR is I consider this project to be kind of like a, a, in need of a tier two contributor documentation strategy. Um, you know, you ha it's kind of like you have a contributor guide. Now what? Um, you know, you've got your contributor base. Now what? Um, so we're working with them on kind of that next level of um, plans and, uh, and strategy for their contributor community, uh, specifically growing their reviewer base. So um, that's pretty much it for us. Um, and also, by the way, the contributor growth group is also meeting later this afternoon. Um, I think that's at 2 p.m. Pacific, so it might be uh, late for some of the London folks on the call, but um, would love to have y'all at that as well. That's it. I guess I have one question. I, I am aware that there have been some discussions around the uh, steering committee proposal while I've been on holiday and I have not read, um, I'm not <laughs> up to speed with what, what the current status is. Actually, so I have two questions related to that. One yeah. is, 
do we need to schedule maybe having Alexis come to the TOC uh, and talk about that proposal or have we moved on beyond that point? Um, I feel like that might be your call. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, sounds like I need to read read what's happened. Yeah, I, well, I mean, we invited Alexis to the governance working group because that's where we talk about this stuff, and Alexis is really gung ho about meeting with y'all. So, um, well, I, I, I guess that relates to my second question, which is, I mean, it seems like there's lots of activity and hopefully some recommendations, you know, coming out of this process. Yeah. Do we have? Um, I, I guess, you know, we want to make sure we're discussing what those, I, I guess at some point, are you going to present those back to us or give us things to review or how, how are we going to take the process of these governance recommendations through the TOC? Yeah, and that's, that's ideal, like what you're describing is ideally what we wanted to do. We wanted to collaborate on a document together and that together as a SIG uh, mm -hmm. and then give you all recommendations on you know, either potential changes to the requirements um, and kind of go from there. So um, I think our group, our crew just kind of wants to talk about it more, honestly. Um, because like I said before, with the project health stuff, I feel like people take you all really literally. So if it's like, if your bullet on the graduation requirement is open governance or steering committee, <laughs> People are going to be like, oh, let's just do the steering <laughs> steering committee it is. And then we have like 50 steering committees. And uh, it's like, do we really do we really need like all of those projects to have steering committees? So from our perspective, I feel like we just needed more holistic guidance uh, and not necessarily like just throwing out the like one potential solution, which for Nats, by the way, sounds wonderful. So like, so from our from our standpoint, like, it it sounds like uh, it sounds like it's a, it's a great solution for for one party or, or project rather, um, and, but not necessarily like a, a graduation requirement if that makes any sense. And that's why we're kind of pushing the uh, we're pushing Dims's idea about badging uh, because then that puts the uh, it puts the power in the end user to make those decisions. Uh, and then also it doesn't, um, it doesn't force the project to like uh, make their governance into this box that we're giving. So um, that's, a, that's a lot of our take. I can't speak for everyone in our crew. Obviously, like I said, this is a hot topic, um, but I feel like from a, just a, a, an overall summary perspective, I think that's kind of where we are. So. Uh, I think Alexis also thinks that like, because we're saying no, and I say that in quotes, um, uh, you know, because we're saying no to steering, we're not necessarily saying no to steering, we're just saying no to like giving everybody the guidance of have to have a steering committee if you don't meet these requirements. So um, I think that's kind of what the, the discrepancy is. Okay. So if, I went in, if I went in hard there, I apologize <laughs> on details. <laughs> That, I, that, that all sounds good. I think there's a lot of, yeah, as I said, I'm not up to speed with exactly what's happened in the last week on that uh, discussion, but I think, you know, TOC, when we've um, talked about it before, felt like, well, there's plenty of scope for, uh, you know, we need to make sure we're, we're incentivizing the right things, that we're not inadvertently incentivizing the wrong things. So I think right. having uh, more thought on that before we have a proposal is fabulous anybody else got any questions for sig contributor strategy okay uh we're going to go back to app delivery hi Alice. hello everyone sorry for being late uh but we also have harry here uh, there's not a lot of updates really from our side. Um, I'll let then Harry speak about a um, couple of them as well. Uh, mostly because our meetings were canceled. Uh, the recent ones due to KubeCon. Overall, we consider we have a bit of a slower progress on the current working groups right now in air gapped and uh, the operator definition. 
and are currently working on re-engaging people again like moving it into the main meetings and seeing that we get a bit more momentum there um there was a session at kubecon obviously they, i just heard that from harry that we have now a project for review so flagger seems to be um in the next one to review and overall the work that we also didn't make progress but we will share more progress um on is this is the landscape for for app delivery uh, so the idea is to have like a tab that's going to have application management and delivery. The main reason is that currently everything is like stuffed into like this one bucket, which feels kind of weird as we have many different items um, that people are looking for. So whether it's application definition, uh, delivery, like operation side, even for operator frameworks and the way to build operators, we have a couple of options, which is currently all stuffed like into this one uh, bucket, but no concrete proposal here. Uh, but this is something where we will uh, provide a draft in, in the next meetings. Yes, uh, so if you yeah. use racially slides, you can see the update. <laughs> what I can do, hold on. Uh, I mean, you, if you use racially slides, you can see the update on that page. Mm. Now we're back to one. Yes. So, so basically, we are uh, approaching more new projects to uh, present uh, present in the SIG meeting. For example, Flagger, uh, which is a progressive delivery system on Kubernetes. So. Uh, we are inviting uh, Stefan uh, to give us a presentation uh, to the community to let people know more about that project. So that project is not part of CNC for now, but we are, you know, we are looking at it. So uh, this is uh, some effort we are doing. And we are also approaching some other project um, to see the possibility if they want to engage more with the CNC. Um, and SIG app delivery uh, are very happy to become the bridge between these projects and uh, between the projects to the CNCF community. So this is one thing we are recently uh, working on. Uh, besides that, due to the uh, SIG meeting we canceled uh, because of Kubicon, we don't have other inputs or updates on the uh, things. Okay, yeah, this is what I can update from my side. Yeah, this is, yeah, Good point from Harry. So we're trying also taking this more proactive approach to invite projects that kind of fall in our like area and ask them to present. I'm not saying you have to join the CNCF with your project, but just sharing more or less what they're working on with the community. That's it from our side, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, not just I think. Wonderful. Thank you. Any questions? for app delivery. Uh, a question about sandbox applications were paused in July and August. So we're now doing sandbox applications through the kind of new spreadsheet process. So they no longer need to go through the six. Our next review meeting for that is going to be next week. That is a September 8th. Nice. And the idea is we do them every two months going forward. Yeah. Uh, hello, SIG Network. Hey. Good. Oh, that um, sandbox review is, is timely potentially for some of the discussions that we have inside of SIG Network. So um, we have a little bit of a similar story, a bit of a recap of some things that we were doing before KubeCon. And we, we canceled our meeting week of KubeCon. Uh, but but um, we did get some good participation at KubeCon during our deep dive, which is which is good. Uh, so we anticipate some new faces uh, coming up at our meeting on Thursday. Um, last time that we met, we discussed um, a service mesh working group as a as an internal track to SIG Network and some of the projects, the the topics that are of focus in that group. 
Um, uh, we had also decided upon meeting times for the working group and had concluded that we would use the main um, SIG network meeting time to advance on some of the service mesh working group topics um, up to the point that we need to push that out of the way for um, other reviews or other topics. Uh, speaking of, of other topics, there is um, an annual review up for network service mesh. Um, I think um, Elena and Ed are maybe coordinating on that one. I think Ed is, speaking of health, I think he's either mentally or physically or maybe both still recovering from KubeCon. Uh, but but uh, the annual review for NSM is up and available for people to look at. Um, there's a, an ambassador um, due diligence um, in flight. There's, um, there's a doc out there that is labeled with public preview, but I, I'm not sure that we've um, gotten to that point just yet. So there's active due diligence going on on ambassador. And that's, that's what we've got going on, I think. I mean, that's, um, we're really going to be getting the service mesh working group up and going, hopefully in earnest, um, uh, in the same SIG network venue for the first time this week. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for a lot of engagement there. Nice. Okay. Any questions? All right, who's next? Hello, runtime. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Ricardo. All right, so we didn't have a lot of updates. I mean, we had one meeting and we canceled the other one because of KubeCon, just like uh, all, the, all the other six. Uh, so in our last meeting, we had a presentation from the Tinkerbell project, uh, and that's basically bare metal provisioning. And that was a pretty good presentation, and they're interested maybe in applying for something in the CNCF maybe, but uh, they don't know yet when, so that may happen in the future. Uh, in We've been reaching out to some other uh, communities and projects as well. Um, so we have on the operating systems for containers, there's a couple of projects that we reached out to. Uh, one of them is Talos. They actually scheduled a meeting or a presentation for our next meeting. And Another one is Flatcar, and they haven't confirmed yet, but then they're pretty similar to Talos, and uh, basically it's uh, an operating system based on CoreOS, and both of these meant uh, for running containers. And then as far as uh, container runtimes, uh, there's a couple of projects. Uh, one of them is Trow, we reached out to them, and. That's basically uh, another image registry, uh, but it's written in Rust, uh, and hopefully we're going to have a presentation from them. Then another one pending is uh, WASCC, which is a WASM runtime. Uh, they're also maybe presenting sometime in the future. So I'm just pinging them in the, in, in the GitHub uh, issue that we opened. Then in the AI, AI ops space, uh, there's a couple of projects. Uh, Kubeflow uh, also opened a GitHub issue and a very popular project in, the, in uh, you know, serving machine learning models and, and, and doing the learning part, uh, which falls within the scope of the SIG. So hopefully we get some participation participation from them. And another project is Seldom Core, also interested in presenting, but they um, they haven't scheduled a meeting yet. So 
So a lot of, uh, you know, reaching out to different projects. So hopefully we, we get, uh, you know, presentations scheduled for our next meetings. So as far as uh, the working group, uh, container orchestrated device working group, uh, uh, we didn't have any major updates. Also, everybody uh, busy with KubeCon. And existing projects, uh, we have Quay that is still in progress and in incubation. So no new updates there. So uh, hopefully we get um, more traction there and you know moves uh, moves forward uh, so that um, it goes ahead with the vote. So yeah, and and I think those are all the updates. And any yeah, any questions and. Did somebody from the TOC um, step forward to lead that DD for Quay? No, we haven't had any anybody from the TC, TOC step forward yet. So yeah, it's right. looking for a TOC uh, sponsor. Okay. Anyone is uh, excited by that prospect, do shout on the TOC. Huh, yeah. Okay, uh, right, SIG security. All right, hey, this is Brandon. Um, so pretty quick updates. Uh, I think the first one is around OPA. Uh, we recommend the OPA for graduation. This is based on uh, the, uh, the, the review we did with them earlier this year. Um, and we followed up with the maintainers just to make sure uh, nothing much has changed in terms of security. Um, so we've recommended them for graduation from the security um, perspective. Um, the big event that we had was um, Cloud Native Security Day. Um, this was um, the Code Locator event uh, with KubeCon, which was a huge success. Um, thank you everyone for, for helping out with this. Um, we saw about almost 400 people in the, the channel. There was a good discussion, um, uh, especially for one of the talks uh, called New Paradigms for the Era of Security, which was kind of mapping um, you know, CIA to, to um, distribute the cognitive concepts. Um, we are going ahead with um, Cloud Native Security Day for um, KubeCon NA. Uh, in November, and we'll be opening CFP for that soon. Um, so as usual, um, six security events as well, this will be happening. Uh, we have a couple things kind of in the pipeline. Um, we, are, we have a security assessment of KeyClub, which is almost done. Uh, we are also working on the CNCF white paper, um, which we should have uh, quite a bit of content, at least for the next round of updates. And that's, that's it for, for now. Nice. All right, any questions? Yeah, okay. I guess I, I sort of have a, a, a question and it might be a bit of a rhetorical question and it's more for other SIGs that, rather than SIG security. I'm just wondering if based on you know the, the interaction that SIG security are having with the security day, whether that's you know something that other SIGs, you know, whether doing uh, events like that is uh, a good way of engaging with the community. If, uh, I'm just planting that thought. I think it, I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Just just um, we yeah. um on the storage side we we um we had previously organised um cloud native storage days um which were which had really good attendance when we were doing the in person events but it kind of um we didn't I guess we didn't have the manpower to to materialise it in, for as for the virtual event this time around but it's, we're definitely hoping to. Um, to restart those. 
Cool. Yeah, I think it's a great idea and there will get more participation and more ex ex excitement about the, the SIG and all the different projects and the technology. So, but I think SIG Security was their first and they've been successful at it. So I think maybe uh, it would be great to try with, with some of the other SIGs as well. I'm guessing it's, you know, a significant amount of work to put together the, the program and, and uh, to hold those events. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not obliging any of the other SIGs to do it. I, you know, I'm just sort of planting it's, that thought as a, as a possibility. It's been, it's been worth the effort so far, I think. Great. I don't know, is it too late for North America for November? I guess it would it, be. It'd be a little bit tight. We could see what we could do if, if a SIG wanted to uh, do a day or not. I'd be so much happier to track for 2021, though. Yeah, I, yeah. I, <laughs> we will do the best to accommodate on a first come, first serve basis. <laughs> Sounds fair. <laughs> All right. Uh, which, which is the next one up? Is it storage? Hello, storage. Hello. Um, okay, so in terms of um, in terms of projects on on the, on our play for the moment, um, we've got uh, Proviga. We're we're still looking for a TAC sponsor to work with us on the due diligence. We're we discussed um, we just discussed in the SIG call a couple of weeks back and. We've allocated the tech leads who can work on it, but it's probably towards the end of um, September, beginning of October, that we would um, uh, look to to schedule this uh, due diligence work um, with the aim of, of having it done uh, by the end of October. Um, so, if uh, if somebody from the TOC wants to wants to work with us on that, please raise your hands. Um, we we think that Provigo is a particularly interesting project and would fill um, a new gap, uh, sort of uh, in 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 the storage landscape for the CNCF. Um, we're also uh, beginning the review for OpenEBS, uh, currently a sandbox project. Who have made a proposal to move um, to incubation. There are uh, a few things that um, that we need to review with with the project team, and that's ongoing. Um, there are the TIKV and Rook votes, which are ongoing, which I believe should just be about done now. Um, and we had uh, a presentation from the Piraeus project, um, which is a project that's considering Sandbox, uh, which is which is worth looking at. Um, and also the data set uh, lifecycle framework, which is um, uh, an abstraction method for for providing different data sets in in Kubernetes environments and their caching of those data sets, um, specifically for research type use cases. But um, I think I think the, the 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 scope could be more generic too. So so that's particularly interesting. And they've just um, submitted a sandbox request. Um, the presentation recordings for the SIG um, are are linked there. If if anybody in the TOC wants to wants to have a look there, um, and then finally uh, we reviewed and discussed the performance and benchmarking white paper. Uh, we expect to have that published um, for for final review shortly. Um, and just a, a you know a quick nod to to all of the work that happened at KubeCon. So thanks for all of that, and we're. And we had a good um, we had a good session, a good succession there, um, and some good Q and A, which was which was really good, um, which also resulted in um, some good feedback and uh, and add-ons to to some of the landscape and uh, performing performance and benchmarking white paper docs, which was really really useful too. So we got some some new uh, uh, SIG uh, attendees as a result, um, and that's it for storage. Fantastic. Is there anyone else or is that become them all? Yay. That wraps us up today. Amazing. Unless anyone has any other questions or business they would like to bring up.
Okay, I think we all have an extra 25 minutes of our lives. Go and make a cup of coffee or whatever. <laughs> Enjoy it, make something good with that 25 minutes. And see you next time. Thank you. Thanks everyone, bye. 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 bye.